Good morning, everybody. It's Valerie Ling here, clinical psychologist, coming to you next to my fish tank this morning. Um, I tried to see if I could get a better view of the fish tank, but I almost need to do this. And the fish are quite shy. There's only two of them in there. I don't think they like being on Facebook Live, but um, who knows, maybe as I go about the talk, they will reappear. Good morning. So today I'm wanting to talk to you a little bit about what's been brewing in my head. Um, I've been invited to give a, good morning Kim, thanks for joining me. I've been invited to, to give a keynote on a topic, the topic of burnout. And um, I actually started to think, what am I going to say? Uh, the keynote is to a group of health professionals. And I thought, you know, don't we all know this already? What's meant to happen to prevent burnout? How to take care of ourselves? What do you think, Kim? You think we've got it all figured out? You think we, you know, we, we should know the, te the theory and there's really nothing holding us back from applying that theory to A, recognize why it's important to take care of ourselves and B, to actually know what needs to be done to prevent burnout. So in kind of mulling this stuff over, um, I read some literature or, or, or a book, I should say, I wouldn't say that it's research, that reminded me of a really old theory, um, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And it kind of put something into my head that I thought I might come and share with you because you know, as I'm mulling this in my head, it's probably something that will provide me with a narrative or a framework to talk about needs. Kim says, you wish. You wish, right? Me too, me too. I'm not immune from this, Kim. Um, it reminded me of our fish tank. This fish tank is actually a year old now. Numerous fish have lived in this fish tank. Some have survived and some haven't. And I don't know very much about how to keep fish alive. Um, I struggle with plants, so fish is a bit of a step up for me. But um, there are members in this home in my family who actually love fish. And um, I thought that we would buy the fish tank, make it look all pretty, put all the plants and the pebbles, and then chuck the water in, and then chuck the fish in, and all will be fine. Ecosystem, ready to go. Fish will survive and thrive. Well, lo and behold, this is not the case. We get to the fish shop, and they're make, they want to make sure that we are responsible fish owners, and they check with us. Have you actually set up your tank a week in advance, blink, blink, a week in advance. Okay, you need to actually set your tank up a week in advance so that the water is actually um, the right uh, acidity. You've got to test the acidity. You've got to test the composition of the water, all the sort of sediments that are up there when you put the sand and the pebbles and things in there actually need to settle down. You're laughing with me, Kim? Kim? Yes, it was a bit of a lesson. <laughs> All right, so you got to get that water done and the environment ready for the little fishies. Tick. Right, we now go to the fish shop, the water and the tank is ready. Now we select the fish. And I'm thinking, I don't know, how do you select a fish? Any old fish could live in this tank pretty much, this water, there's a filter going now. No, you actually have to know which fish are going to thrive in this environment. Are they tropical fish? Are they freshwater fish? Saltwater fish? Whatever water fish. Okay, you need to know. And not only that, but the very keen fish people in my home have actually also thought about the temperature in our house. Do we have the right conditions in our house to put a tank in such that the water temperature actually remains viable for the fish to live in? All right, so we do all of that. We select the right fish. They're not necessarily the prettiest fish, which to you know, my surprise, that's not how you choose fish. And we bring the fish home and I'm thinking, we're good to go. Chuck them fish in. We've got a tank. It'll be therapeutic. It'll be nice. No, we can't chuck the fish in. The environment's right, <clears throat> we got the right fish, but the fish have to acclimatize. We don't want to stress the poor little fishies. And so we actually take the bag with the water that the fish are in, and we actually have to float that bag with the fish in the tank for a little while to allow the little fish to acclimatize. 
And very slowly then do we release the fish into the environment. And that is not all. Every day, things have to be assessed. It has to be tested. The temperature has to be taken. Um, regularly, the acidity of the water needs to be taken. Any new thing, this is what I didn't realize, because one of us stuck a hand into the tank and it was like, ah, you can't do that. Your hands will look like moisturizer and cream and soap that's going to change the entire composition of the water and the little fish aren't going to survive. Note to self, um, any little change that is introduced to the environment has to actually, actually be thought through and gradually the fish have to acclimatize. Kim, you, you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> Very similarly, you know, such care and attention can be taken to make sure that fish survive in a fish tank such as this. Um, but we don't often think about ourselves that way. Uh, we often just expect ourselves to be able to run um, you know, with whatever demands we have on our plate. We ignore whatever changes might be actually in our world. Um, we don't even think of whether the environment, the things around us are actually optimized uh, for what we need, let alone what we need to grow. And this is where I started thinking, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, is, is actually quite a helpful little audit to go through when we're thinking about whether or not we've got um, the right ingredients to acclimatize um, and, and answer the, the question of uh, what do we need. Whenever somebody asks me that, what do you need? I kind of go like a bit blank because I think, oh my gosh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about what I need. Kim says, this is why I don't have fish. <laughs> this is why I don't have plants or I don't take care of the fish, Kim. <laughs> okay, let's go through Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it, it might be a helpful way to actually, for you to do a bit of an audit on a daily, weekly, regular basis. And especially when change is imminent and especially when you're feeling a little bit provoked. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs is based on a pyramid where the base, the, the chunkier, bigger base is devoted to our physiological needs. All right, things like how are we going, how are we going with regards to our basic needs of food, water, warmth, and rest. Now, in sort of expatriate literature, that really talks about the sense of home. Um, what's your environment like? I'd encourage you to think about your, what your office is like. Have you actually optimized the space that you plan to work in or to rest in to be optimized to give you a sense of warmth? Um, are you actually taking care of what goes, in, what goes into your body? And do you actually have determined places and times to rest? So physiological needs first. And then the next layer of the pyramid are your safety needs. How do you feel psychologically and physically? Do you actually feel protected? Do you feel that there's security? Do you feel there's order in your world? Do you actually feel there's natural law and consequences that things are fair and right? Is there stability? Do you have a sense of freedom? Or is there fear? Is there chaos? Is there a sense of threat? Is there a sense of insecurity? Well, we've got to pay attention to our safety needs as well. We've got to work out how am I actually feeling emotionally? Are the changes that are coming into my world causing me to feel unsettled? A little bit like the little fishies. If I was stuck in my hand right now and mess up there, gravel and things like that, their world would become unstable and unsafe. Now, in Maslow's hierarchy, Physiological needs and safety needs are the basic needs. You can't negotiate those things. You actually have to meet them. And you've got to do a bit of an audit and say, how am I going meeting those needs? Then comes uh, the next two needs, which are the psychological needs. <sighs> Belonging and love needs. How are we going in our relationships? Do we actually feel cared for? Do we feel loved? Do we feel connected? Do we feel like we belong? Do we feel like our relationships are actually providing us with the sense of belonging and love that we need? Have we done an audit about that? And then above that, the next psychological need is our esteem needs. Do we feel like we're achieving? Do we feel respected? Do we feel like there's a sense of being valued? Do we, do we have a feeling that others actually respect um, our contributions and the rep our reputation? Do we have that sense that the people around us get us? So 
important. Um, and do we dismiss that? Do we sort of think, oh, well, I don't really need that. Well, Maslow would argue that we actually do need these things. Now, in this, in this pyramid, uh, the theory is that uh, we, we need to actually meet those base needs, our basic needs and our psychological needs before we, we can go to the next level. And the idea is that we will kind of get frustrated and um, I think we, we can get actually quite distracted and quite focused and quite destabilized um, when those needs aren't being met. And more importantly, when we haven't identified what those needs are. Now, when you've got your physiological needs, your safety needs, your belonging and love needs, and your esteem needs, then you move to the next level, which are your self-fulfillment needs. Now, those are the growth needs, right? That's when you've got your lovely base in your pyramids kind of all stable and figured out, and you can move, um, and we can move, sorry, Kim, um, Kim says, I was reading that although we talk about these as a hierarchy, these aren't necessarily step needs. No, yes, I think you're right. I think um, Maslow would probably agree with that, that we can probably go up and down. But I think the theory is that we will be driven to fulfill and motivate those needs and that without those base needs being addressed, whichever order they come, the self-fulfillment needs, I suppose, will get frustrated. And those self-fulfillment needs are your growth needs. Uh, the idea that you can actually pursue creative activities, um, feeling the sense that you're achieving potential, the dreaming, visioning kind of stuff. And I think that's often where we can get um, into this space thinking that with, with, with burnout, that we can run on empty, that we can negate some of our basic needs, we can negate some of our psychological needs to try to reach out for those growth needs. Um, and, and I suppose what I just wanted to highlight was that whether or not you prescribe to his theory or not, um, the little fishy in the fish tanks give us a great um, analogy that there are, there are going to be some fundamental things that we can't just throw out, right? that we, we, we need to probably assess and evaluate not just our internal uh, reactions or internal reactions will probably give us an indication, but what are some of those needs? What are some of those environmental needs? What are some of those relationship needs? And pro probably what are some of those seasonal needs as well? That's all I have for today. What do you think, Kim? In your reading of uh, Maslow's needs, uh, what do you see as being helpful? Um, I'd be curious to find out about that. Um, it's probably a theory that... Um, I probably should, could do a little bit more reading to see how it's been applied. Um, in the particular book that I was reading, I think it was kind of giving just a narrative that sometimes we can um, overreach for a particular stage without probably addressing some of our fundamental needs. All right, Kim. I'm just going to reload here. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay. Not sure if you sent me a comment, but uh, feel free to continue uh, responding once I log off. Have a great day.